Hello and welcome everybody to this course technology forecasting for strategic decision making. Uh, I am Professor Bala Ramudrai and I, I have with me Professor Dimitri Kucharavi. So we are very happy to have you on board for this course. Uh, we are starting off with the first session. Uh, this is going to be the session where we give you an introduction to this course itself which is called Technology Forecasting for Strategic Decision Making. A little bit about uh, myself, uh, I am an innovation consultant and a professor of design thinking, entrepreneurship and technology forecasting. I was a uh, technology uh, uh, forecasting research fellow, Marie Curie research fellow in Politecnico di Milano, Milan, Italy. Uh, we developed a tele, tele, I'm sorry, technology forecasting methodology called FORMAT and uh, this is an industry academia project funded by the People Marie Curie Actions, IAPP, uh, uh, European Union funding body. Uh, this is where I met our co-teacher for this course, Professor Dimitri Kucharavi. Uh, we, we worked together on this project. And uh, I have learnt a lot from him uh, through our interactions during the project and after that as well. Uh, one day we were talking about uh, NPTEL and Swayam and he got very intrigued about the platform and the number of uh, users there are uh, in this particular platform. And uh, we said, uh, we got talking and we said, uh, you know, I was describing to him design thinking, the course and how uh, teachers, learners, students have adopted this methodology, embraced it uh, from various walks of life, various uh, disciplines, they've taken it. Uh, but then we thought about what is really ahead, uh, how do we look at something, at the road ahead, at the course ahead, what is going to happen next. So that sort of led us to the question of uh, how do uh, these learners, the people who have gone through say a problem solving methodology like design thinking, how can they uh, take current decisions on innovation itself on in a, in a business context. So that sort of led us to this course itself, uh, how do we make our decisions on current technology. So this is the main question that we asked ourselves. So that uh, led us to the creation of this entire course that you see right in front of yourself. Uh, and it definitely gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, today uh, our co-teacher for this course, Professor Dimitri Kucharavi. I'm, I'm uh, indeed very, very fortunate and happy to have him for this course on uh, Swayam or NPTEL. So, Dimitri, uh, over to you. Can you please tell us about uh, yourself, uh, uh, introduce yourself about your, uh, to our learners? Yeah. Hello, hello everybody. Hello from Strasbourg, France. I'm Dimitri Kusharave. Uh, currently, I'm working uh, at Strasbourg University. Particularly, um, now I'm a researcher in Humanist Laboratory at the uh, M. Strasbourg Business School. And uh, I'm also teaching technology forecasting, knowledge economy, and innovation and strategy courses in France and in Italy. And uh, my research interest now for the last 16 years are focused on um, technology management and in particularly strategic forecasting of technology change. And uh, on logistic warehousing design also as a practical application. Well, Bala, could you explain a bit about the course? Sure. Um, so thanks, Dimitri, for uh, your introduction. I'm sure we have uh, a lot to learn uh, from you uh, during the course of this uh, few weeks that we're going to be uh, you know, presenting this course to our learners. Um, when we thought of delivering such a course to our uh, NPTEL audience, uh, we said that we'll start by setting up a context in which this technology forecasting actually works. So we set it called strategic decision making. That's where the broad context in which we operate. So that may sound like a mouthful, 
Uh, however, it is the context in which the technology really operates. So, in which we have the need to look at what's coming up ahead, the forecast that we need to do. This is the business context that we look at. Um, you know, business really needs decisions made today uh, or in some cases, worst cases, uh, they will have to do it yesterday. So, it's very urgent that they make decisions in the uh, near term for uh, something that may happen in the future okay so uh, we as technology managers or business managers uh, may not be certain about what may really happen in the future so we are taking educated guesses based on our own instinct and our own experience where the voice inside us sort of guides us towards a certain decision okay this is a good idea this definitely we have accumulated experience you have accumulated all this uh, wisdom from uh, what has ever happened so far, which is a good idea. But sometimes we ourselves may not be a hundred percent sure. We not may not be hundred percent sure at all about uh, what's happening. Okay. Um, so in this course, we sort of uh, think that this method will help in making this decision, make it uh, a bit easier on you, the decision maker. Uh, or on people who are working with such decision makers to help them saying that this is what we have come out with. So we have a sort of a stepwise approach, a process uh, based approach for this. We uh, will guide you to, through these steps of course. The step zero as we call it is setting up the business context in which the decision has to be made. So step zero is setting up the uh, parameter so to speak of the business context itself. Okay, then the next step, step one as we call it, is to frame what is the question to be answered. Why are this technology forecasting exercise that you are willing to carry on here? Okay, so we call it TF uh, for short. TF is technology forecasting. Okay, then once we have made the question clear, we, have, we need to answer those questions. That's the heart of this technology forecasting methodology itself is to answer these questions using two methods you can see uh, one is the qualitative again using your instinct this is where your instinct your experience your wisdom comes in you can use your imagination creativity as well this is all part form uh, form the part of the qualitative methods okay and lastly we use quantitative methods where we crunch numbers take numbers uh, data from out there or data from if you're within a company uh, you take those data and we will suggest certain models that can be applied so that you can make sense of the data look at how things uh, pan out in the future based on data then finally you sum it all up okay through the qualitative methods and the quantitative methods and now apply it back to the business decision itself so so you take Start with the business context, make the questions, uh, use the quant qualitative methods and the quantitative methods, combine it and now make your business decision. Okay, So this is sort of the broad structure in which we are going to operate. Just to help you, uh, I am going to show you a picture before we get into the specifics of what all we are going to discuss in the course, I just want to show you this picture. Uh, just take a guess where could this picture taken from what does this depict any guesses just guess it some of my students take a you know their, their phone and and, uh, and and take a snapshot of it and search on the internet you can do that too it's okay with us you can you can freeze the video take a picture of it and look up on the internet yes some of you may have figured it out for yourselves uh, this is a scene from a play called Macbeth written by William Shakespeare. Um, this is a particular painting. Uh, now it's it's in uh, Musée d'Orsay in uh, France, a museum not so far off from where uh, you live, uh, Professor Dimitri. So, uh, well, a three hour high speed train right away. Uh, this is from Macbeth, Act, Act 1, Scene 3. Five minutes. Hour and forty-five. Okay, I stand corrected. <laughs> okay, uh, so I'll, I'll, this particular scene is very interesting, and I really uh, like it. I'll just read it out uh, for you. This is the the set of dialogues uh, from there. Uh, in this scene, uh, what you saw were uh, five characters. On your left were Banquo and Macbeth. 
they come across three shady figures in a misty foggy land. Macbeth says, Speak if you can. What are you? And the first witch, so she is a witch, says, All hail Macbeth, hail to thee, Thane of Glamis. The second witch says, All hail Macbeth, hail to thee, Thane of Cowdor. Third witch says, All hail Macbeth, thou shalt be king thereafter. So Banco, his uh, friend and uh, colleague to Macbeth says, Good sir, why do you start and seem to fear things that do sound so fair? Banco says to the witches, The name of truth, are ye fantastical or that indeed which outwardly ye show? My noble partner you greet with present grace and great prediction of noble having and of royal hope. That he seems wrapped withal. To me you speak not. If you can look into the seeds of time and say which shall which grain will grow and which will not. Speak then to me who neither beg nor fear your favours nor your hate. For the first which says Hail, second witch says, Hail, and third witch says, Hail. I really like uh, this particular dialogue. This is what caught my attention. Uh, if you can look into the seeds of time and say which grain will grow and which will not. So this is for me the essence of the course itself. Okay. Dimitri, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, with difficulties, you know, you okay. appear and disappear. Yes, my and internet... I that, uh, you are recording, recording on your side continue, but I, you know, the quality of connection is not so good. Yes, I hope uh, the audio is also um, recorded here. Okay, so you I'll... You can I'll continue your part. Okay. You, uh, you can continue your part and that's it. Okay, sure, thank you. So there are five characters that you saw in uh, in this scene. Uh, Macbeth is a general in the army of King Duncan of Scotland. Uh, Banco, his friend, uh, and is a general in the army also. Uh, the three witches that you saw, are, uh, Shakespeare refers to them as wayward or weird sisters. So these are the five characters. Now before you wonder what this got to do with the technology forecasting, I'll spell it out for you. Uh, in our context, uh, really the Macbeth is the decision maker. Uh, Banco is the analyst. Okay, we are making a sort of parallel. Uh, the first which is the question that we ask for technology forecasting that you saw me uh, uh, highlight a few minutes ago. Uh, which too could be a representative of the qualitative uh, for methods that we use. And which three is the quantitative method that we use in the uh, in the in the course also? Okay, so to keep uh, it in your memory, uh, in case you forget everything else, this picture if it remains in your memory, saying uh, I saw this and now I know this is technology related to technology forecasting. Remember that you are the analyst trying to exp help the decision maker. Th those are Macbeth and Banco. And the three which is from the question, the quantitative methods and the qualitative methods. So this will serve as a hook for yourself to keep in your uh, head what are the steps or uh, we have covered in our course. Okay, so that's why we covered this. Um, and uh, one practical example I'd like to give. If you have weather like what we have today, uh, morning it is raining, now it's a bit bright outside, uh, maybe it will get sunny a bit. So uh, my basic uh, problem is I have to venture out tomorrow, okay. So I have to venture out in, in a weather like this, I don't know for sure. So uh, that to me is the business context in which I operate, okay. So now the uh, context is clear. Now my decision that I have to take is where should I carry the umbrella or not. So that for me is the step zero where we have set the context. And I've asked the question, 
should I carry the umbrella or not forms step one. Okay. Uh, step two is qualitative. Around this time of the year in my place, I know that it rains unannounced. Uh, the probability of uh, getting rain is definitely very high. I know this from experience. I have lived in this city for about six years now. I know that in uh, in the time that we are in right now, it definitely rains. Okay, so that's my uh, instinct, intuition, whatever you want to call it, my experience. Okay, I've used it now. And the third part of it is quantitative. I check whether uh, people have crunched numbers to tell me that, wow, there is a 70% chance that it's going to rain. And guess what? I am going to take the umbrella for when I'm venturing out tomorrow. So that is my practical example that one can relate to uh, covering the steps. So Dimitri, so this was a very frivolous sort of uh, uh, light example. Uh, now to up the seriousness a bit, I have one question for you. Uh, and you worked in this context a lot uh, and you have gained a lot of experiences. Uh, where it would be great if you can hear it from you, the types of strategic decision making, what is strategic decision making, what are the types of these contexts that we talk about. So it will be great to hear from you, Dimitri. Thank you. Thank you, Paula, for giving me stage. <laughs> and um, uh, I'd like to uh, try to sum up out of these uh, stories and out of uh, this uh, introduction some uh, kind of useful um, rules that we are going to use in, in our call. Uh, first of all, when we are talking about strategic decision making uh, and strategic forecasting, we have to make clear what is a strategy. Okay, and if you look to the strategy through the dictionary, we can find something like that. Strategy is the general plan or set plan and to achieve something, especially our own career. But uh, in our course, uh, based on our experience, we are going to suggest you a more specific definition. And please uh, refer to this definition in all our um, next exercises. We will define a strategy as a management plan for strengthening the performance and competitive advantages of the company. In context of uh, technological forecasting for strategic decision making, we are interested to reinforce our plans such a way that when we will perform what was planned, will be beneficial for them, will increase competitive advantages of the company. So, this is about strategy. Uh, an example about the weather forecast, in fact, you choose which strategy you are going to apply, to take umbrella or not to take umbrella. With example about market, those were the question also, in order to make a choice. So, and that, uh, the second definition uh, that we need to make here, this is a definition of what, what is decision, okay? because we are talking about strategic decision. And uh, once again, if you look at the dictionary, the decision, it's situation when you make a, uh, a choice, what should be done or which is the best of what is possible action or what should not be done. Uh, the same way I like just to uh, suggest for your attention uh, the working definition that we are going to use in our course and it's bit shorter and simple. Uh, for our decision, this is a choice. This is a choice between two or more options. And when we forecast, we need to uh, make clear those options. We need to reduce uncertainties and to transform uncertainties to the risk. The definition of uncertainties and risk we will discuss later on, but for now, it is uh, clear, um, it is interesting to uh, sum up that for us, decision, this is a choice between two or more options. Okay? In order to make this choice, we have to, uh, to forecast. But what is the difference between a strategic and other kind of decision? In order to understand this difference, 
Let us just see uh, three different decisions that we usually take, which is based on taxonomy presented in academic papers. We can distinguish strategic, tactical, and operational levels of decision. What are the different areas of decision? When we are talking about operational decision, the area, this is uh, how to use resources in production process, for instance. To take umbrella or not to take umbrella, this is operational decision. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you look to the weather point. When tactical decision, the area of decision, this is a more management of resources. How we are going to arrange resources? What are the functional specification? And what kind of automation we are going to use in this process or another process? How we are going to arrange human resources? How we are going to organize process? And the different kind of regulations, all of them, those are the area of tactical decision. What is the area of strategic decision? The strategic decision usually, this is uh, the area when we plan for the changes and when we plan for the risk. When we de uh, define the objectives of design or when we define the objective of the process. When we uh, try to um, justify economically our decision, those are the strategic areas. If you just to compare the different effect or impact of decision, in fact, everything is starting from strategic decision. Because a tactical decision, which are strong in a short term, in scope of decided strategy, they de depend on the strategic decision. When operational decision can be considered independently, but of course they depend on the taking strategic and tactical decision. The level of decision maker, who are doing uh, those decisions? For instance, if you are talking about operational decision, normally this is a head of service, operational manager. The functional uh, direction and the middle management usually uh, responsible for the tactical decision. And the strategic decision usually are done by top management and senior management, which are responsible for uh, competitiveness of all company for long uh, long-range uh, changes. If you uh, take one more um, parameter to compare these three different uh, three different decisions, usually uh, the frequency of operational decisions, they are frequent and they are predictable. We know, for instance, that we need to check weather forecast in order to take decision about to take umbrella or not to take umbrella. We know uh, what kind of uh, situation we will face in the coming future. The tactical decisions, they are less frequent than operational one, and they are less predictable because we need to provide resources management, we need to provide human resource uh, decision. When the strategic decision usually they are unique, it means we don't take strategic decision every month or every six months. The strategic decision they are taking for a certain period because of the big changes they need certain time to be to be accomplished. Let me give you some examples in order to finish this distinction and in order to understand uh, more what is the difference of strategic decision from others. For instance if you need to decide how to restock inventory or how to determine special uh, offer Usually, uh, you, uh, your decision is based, your choice is based on the um, demand for a cost, uh, on the operational for it. When you design a marketing plan, or when you develop a department budget, this is a tactical decision. How you are going to allocate available resources, and this is, uh, this is a tactical level in which place you need to put more and in which place you need and usually they are based uh, on the uh, forecast uh, which can be classified as a tactical forecast like a seasonal change uh, in 
in supply chain, if we are talking about supply chain. This is a tactical decision of how to prepare uh, for a certain situation like changes uh, of the market or changes of the external situation. When uh, we decide to entry or not to entry to the market, or when we decide to exit from certain market, and new business, for instance, a company who produced um, the cars, they decided to start to produce heavy tracks, or the company who produced heavy tracks decided to start producing of, uh, another kind of equipment which has nothing to do with heavy tracks. This is strategic. Introduction of new manufacturing process. For instance, we produced uh, our products based on the steel as a material, and we decide to introduce new manufacturing process and completely replace uh, the steel as a basic material and by a certain plastic. Materials. Those are examples of strategic decisions. But to support those strategic decisions, those strategic choices, which have very high impact on the competitiveness of the company and on the competitiveness of not the company and the industry, we need to be capable to forecast the future changes. Because if our decision will be in accordance with future changes, we will think. If our decisions will be not in accordance with what is going to happen, uh, usually we can find ourselves in a very difficult situation. We will spend resources, a lot of resources, in order to prepare, and we are not in accordance with the changes, so we lose our competitiveness and we can lose our, our market and uh, everything as a company. This was my trial, you know, to introduce you uh, the difference. We, our course, uh, mostly focused on how to support strategic decisions. Uh, there are plenty of different methods and techniques to support tactical and operational uh, levels, which are really powerful, efficient, and effective. This is not a uh, subject of our course. I will talk mostly about this level of decision. Right. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Dimitri. That was uh, uh, enlightening for, for me. I, I knew a few bits of this from our discussion, but uh, uh, very nice. Thank you so much. So, uh, I think uh, so it's time to give us, uh, give our learners a, a glimpse of um, what the um, uh, what the course will look like uh, in terms of the objectives that we have set out uh, to attain in this uh, particular course. This is a very unique course in uh, one sense that um, we have taken a business, uh, we have taken the technology and we are trying to forecast it, but also within the business context itself. So, for that, uh, we need to re uh, uh, the course objective that we have set for learners is they should be able to recall and recognize the modern methods that are required for technology forecasting. So there could be many methods that we describe during this course. They're able to recognize or even recall a few uh, that they could use and uh, uh, and and can can tell that from that during the course the experience in the course. That's one of the objectives that we want to achieve. Uh, then if they're able to uh, recall the same, uh, you know, models that they have learned uh, on uh, and particularly defining the system scope, that's another uh, objective attained as well in this. Uh, so in this, there are terms like system to be forecast because we, we are focusing on a particular technology. We call it a system to be forecast. So we take that and see what's happening with this. We want to examine that. And, and see how it all works and, and how do you project it forward. So that's a system to be forecast and we need to know the scope in which it is there. This is not the system, this is the system. So that's kind of a thing that we would do it. And lastly, I think for me personally, this is a very exciting uh, methodology is to fit time series data with uh, the logistic S-curve model. 
Why is it exciting for me? Because this is uh, reflects nature in several ways. This model uh, is, uh, uh, and and with our long discussions and from the past, I know how uh, useful it is to uh, for uh, for uh, looking at systems like this in 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 a time series. Given a time series data, how can I look at it? So uh, to me, this is the most exciting part. Uh, we will cover many examples and cases as uh, to illustrate all these to make sure that these objectives are uh, met during the course itself. So, as I hinted in the uh, uh, in in the start of this introduction, and uh, we will further elaborate this. This particular session and the, this uh, module will cover what is introduction itself to the technology forecasting methodology. Uh, what does it look like? So this is sort of an overview of all the terms that are involved. In case you have never heard of this, uh, you shouldn't get scared of this. So we are, we are uh, introducing it to you, you to the ba basics of technology forecasting, the different terms involved, what do they mean, uh, how do we define them. All this uh, sort of takes place in this uh, particular module. The second part of this case studies, uh, Dimitri and I both of us believe that uh, experiential learning is the best way to learn, is one of the best ways to learn uh, any new uh, methodology that you can uh, lay your hands on. Uh, and uh, so the second best way is to look at what other people have done uh, in companies in various other contexts. So we'll be presenting some of this which you can relate to. Okay. So uh, case studies is what you will see as the second part. Uh, and. Uh, of course, I talked about the question uh, that has to be raised, uh, the technology forecasting question, what is the correct way to set up this project, how do we frame the questions, uh, how do we go forward with this, how do you even define the system itself, like I talked about the system to be forecast, what is the uh, boundary in which the system resides, how do we define it, all that goes into this particular uh, question, uh, what all formulates a good question. Uh, to be framed. How do we frame it? Uh, you know, with what are the components that have to be there uh, in to form a question? And of course, once you framed a question, you need the answer. How do we get the answer? Is to these three methods, which are qualitative methods, quantitative methods, and a combinatorial combination method as well. So, uh, in short, uh, this is all we put together, and then finally, it should be applied back into a decision. We sort of uh, will wrap it up with. How do we put all of this together? So this forms the basic parts of the course itself. It follows the exact uh, method, uh, the steps of the methodology like a process itself. We wanted the course structure also to reflect the methodology structure so that uh, we go through it in a logical manner. So that was our uh, uh, reasoning, rationale behind this design of the course itself. Um, in this particular course, I think the, the slight distinction or departure from the other NPTEL courses uh, and we have framed it such a way that the retention um, addressing our course objectives is maximum uh, and uh, it, uh, it this, like I said, this has to be very experiential. Ideally, uh, we would like you to actually apply this on a technology forecasting uh, project and uh, take your learning from there on a real project to uh, take your learning from there, work in a team. Uh, this is how Dimitri has been conducting his classes. Uh, I love such a method also. I have been conducting my classes also in such a way. So, but uh, this is a, a massive uh, open online course. So, the next best thing is to make sure that the retention is high. So, this is the, um, uh, you know, the it's going to be homeworks and a final exam. So that's going to be the broad two structures. So in part one, which is the first part that you saw um, in the introduction and the case studies, you will have uh, at end of every session, we will give you a homework. Uh, we hope that you will be able to answer each of these and, and help you retain some of the um, some of the stuff that you've learned in the course. And uh, this is really beneficial in that. So you will have four of these for every part that we cover uh, and then uh, you know part three and part four. So it, the structure repeats and of course the final exam uh, which is going to be uh, you know so what in other NPTEL courses would be assignments is now split into four homework. 
uh, and uh, all of that put together is the uh, assignment for you okay and of course the final exam is uh, not going to be very different uh, from the other NPTEL classes if you have taken other NPTEL courses that is you will have a final exam. Now the big question Dimitri is uh, what about the final so is, is it uh, how, how, are, how are we planning to have that uh, in, in part of this course Dimitri? Hey, you are talking about the final exam? Yes final exam this is something that the learners are really looking forward to how is it going to what, what all is it going to comprise of and how is exam, it going? The final exam and uh, through the specificity of organizing of this course we are going to organize the, the final exam based on the um, course content. Mm -hmm. In fact, you will be asked uh, for questions and for situations which you need to recognize how they can be answered with the content of the course. Okay. So, uh, in order to pass the final exam, you, you need to regularly perform your homework. If uh, you, you perform them regularly, uh, I don't see any difficulties uh, to pass the final exam for you because it will be mostly based on what you are going to see, what you are going to participate and what you are going to learn with the, those four parts of the course. Fair enough. Uh, and uh, we will have a uh, proctored exam as I understand uh, like with the other courses the 75% uh, of it will be a classroom based proctored exam. The assignments of course the homeworks will of course be online, uh, will be uh, multiple choice questions. Uh, Dimitri, uh, we are thinking of also giving them some kind of uh, application oriented questions as well so that they can apply what they have learned. Is, uh, am I, is my understanding correct? Yeah, yeah. Uh, since we will see examples of application, examples uh, of, uh, of uh, forecasting using this method which will be suggested by us or it will be given uh, recorded how potential student can, can perform what, what they can know from the course and uh, we are going to share this, this experience with you. Excellent. I am so excited to be part of this course. Uh, hopefully learners will, uh, our learners in this course will make maximum use of it. Uh, will actually take up a problem and apply it. Anything that uh, something is not clear in this course, uh, we'll be more than happy to answer them uh, in the discussion forums. We have, uh, uh, we'll be looking at and looking forward to your questions, your uh, observations. You you want to go and apply and need some help with that. Uh, we can definitely help you with all that in the discussion forums itself. So. Uh, Dimitri and, uh, and I will uh, look at it and will respond to it uh, and uh, uh, will definitely uh, make sure of that. So I am so happy to uh, co-teach this course with you Dimitri and uh, hopefully it will be uh, useful to the learners as well. Yeah, thank you very much for this, uh, thank you for this opportunity and thank you for the that we can organize this course and let us go ahead. <laughs> See you in the next module then. Thank you. See you. Bye.